Hello everyone and welcome back to the podcast. Now, I think I'm going to be back for a while now after the little break and after the name change. I just wanted to post the March Madness predictions for a little video that I could make. That's going to be pretty quick um, and didn't need me to like have uh, that much research, I guess. Um, Because I had a lot of uh, tests to do. Uh, basically just in the month of March, but should be done with those now, so uh, I'm going to head right back into doing some more episodes for you, and today I'm just going to be resuming into the uh, Tier 3, uh, or Part 2 of the Tier 3 uh, for the NFL Iceberg, so uh, let's just get right into it. Al, I couldn't have done it. I, I couldn't have done what Philadelphia did. I, I, I just Agreed. simply could not have done it. I, I, you've got men out there that are fighting their guts out, trying to win the game, and I'm not saying, not blaming anybody. I, I personally could not have done what they did. I've been allegedly contacting some wise guys in the cement mixing business who were only too happy to mix Hoffa's remains with the cement that was being used to construct part of Giant Stadium in the Meadowlands. That's right, Rick and Court, people involved in fighting human trafficking, sex trafficking, say that Southern California, get this, is one of the world's hot spots for this awful crime. Now, first off, we have Nate Sudfeld. Now, many people don't know about Nate Sudfeld, uh, but they do know the situation that he was in, a uh, pretty infamous situation. Um, so Nate Sudfeld was, or he is currently, a backup quarterback uh, for the San Francisco 49ers, and many people think he's good enough to be a starter, uh, but this doesn't really uh, tie into what this uh, part of the iceberg explains. So now uh, we're going to have to go back to when Nate Sudfeld was the third string quarterback for the Eagles in 2020. Now in the 2020 season finale, the Eagles were going up against the Washington football team and for this game uh, most people were watching to see if uh, if Washington loses the Giants head into the playoffs and if Washington wins Washington goes into the playoffs so many people were watching this as it was one of the last games of the season and you know people were trying to figure out who would win uh, or lose to see who gets into the uh the playoffs now the nfc east this season was in 2020 was terrible i think washington ended up with seven wins and uh were able to make it to the playoffs because they were first the first uh seed or not the first seed but they won the nfc east division um and the giants were i believe like six and ten so it was or six and eleven or something like that uh, six and ten because they hadn't done the 17 game or 18 week season 17 game season so uh you know the the giants were six and ten so uh if washington lost this one the giants were gonna make so a lot of giants fans watching this one and a lot of giants fans are rooting for the eagles and washington fans are trying to keep their hopes alive for the playoffs and uh the eagles uh, to put it in perspective, Washington couldn't make anything, uh, I think in the last couple minutes. So the Eagles, uh, had a chance to, uh, make a game winning drive to win the game and beat Washington and send the, uh, send New York to the playoffs. But if for this last drive, something interesting happened, uh, Doug Peterson pulled Jalen Hurts, the quarterback, out of the game, who was doing spectacular, um, in this game, he was, he was going off, I mean, he had, like, I don't even know how many yards he had, but he was, he was going, he was going off against Washington for this one, and they were still down, so, I think, I believe they needed, like, a touchdown, something to win the game, and Doug Peterson decided to take him out at their own territory, and don't, not he didn't even put in the second string quarterback, not even the backup. He didn't even put in the backup. He put in his third string quarterback, Nate Sudfeld. And now, now when I first saw Nate Sudfeld's name on the, the iceberg, I was like, who is Nate Sudfeld? But Nate Sudfeld, uh, I looked him up. I was like, oh, 
he's the guy that went in instead of Jalen Hurts for that last drive. And, I mean, Nate Sudfeld, as you would imagine, uh, did very bad in that drive, that final drive. And Washington ended up winning that game and going to the playoffs. Um, and Doug Peterson, after the game, had his press um, and didn't really give that good of a reason. But according to Mike Garofolo, uh, you know, Doug Peterson said that he was coaching to win and that Nate Sudfeld has been with the Eagles for a few years and deserves snaps. Now, if you're if you're playing to win, I mean, I get it. You're out. You're out of the playoff race. You're looking at, you know, one of the top draft picks in the draft. And they ended up getting, I believe, the seventh pick in the draft. You know, you're looking at that. Okay, you're not really doing too well. But you're still you're still saying that you're coaching to win. So, you know, you would imagine that you'd have your starting quarterback out there for the final drive to possibly win the game. But no, but no, you put in the third string quarterback. Because he, he's been playing with the Eagles for a few years and deserves snaps. Now, I would, I would agree with that if, say, the Eagles were either winning by 40 or losing by 40. You know, definitely out of reach. Give them a few snaps. But this had playoff implications for a different team. Sure, it was in the NFC East, you know, division rival, maybe. Doug Peterson didn't want them. To, didn't want the Giants to make it to the playoffs and would rather have Washington make it to the playoffs. But he still said that he was trying to coach to win. And yet he put in his back, his third string quarterback for the last drive for a possible game winning drive instead of keeping his starting quarterback out there who was doing great. I mean, he wasn't doing bad at all, I would say. Um, you know, I, I would understand also if Jalen Hurts was just doing terrible, but Jalen Hurts was actually do, keeping up his end of being a quarterback for the team. So, I mean, you know, he decided to put Nate Sudfeld in third string quarterback and, and clearly did not go through, did not go well. Um, and Washington ended up winning that game, making it to the playoffs and losing to the Buccaneers in the first round. But that was a really close game. That one was, but, uh, yeah, that one was an interesting time in the NFL. Uh, I'd say that last week, uh, that last week of the 2020 season. Um, but Doug Peterson, now not with the Eagles, I believe one year after that. And now he's with the Jacksonville Jaguars. We'll have to see what he does. And Jalen Hurts has continued to do well, uh, and prosper, uh, with Nick Sirianni as head coach, um, and him as quarterback. Uh, now this next one, or I guess the next last two of tier three, uh, are kind of ones that don't have to do with, uh, sports and more of like kind of theory-ish type of things and, uh, kind of get into a little bit more, uh, not sports, just outside of sports, but they still have to relate to the NFL. So for this one, um, it would be Jimmy Hoffa's remains. Now, Jimmy Hoffa was an American labor union or, yeah, American labor, labor union leader, uh, who was reported missing in 1975. And, um, his remains were found in a New Jersey landfill. Um, and a little bit later after they found him, um, in that landfill, they, uh, they did more investigations into the case and, uh, you know, he was participating in some illegal actions and some legal stuff. Um, so he does have a negative connotation towards his name now. Uh, but at the time, this was pretty big. Um, but you know, probably asking yourself why and how does Mr. Hoffa have to deal with the NFL? I mean, the NFL is football. I mean, it's not American Labor Union. So, uh, what does Jimmy Hoffa's remains especially have to do with the NFL? Well, in 2010, uh, MetLife Stadium was being renovated, I believe, and there were rumors that Jimmy Hoffa's, or Jimmy Hoffa was actually buried 17 feet under MetLife Stadium, uh, under concrete, so, I mean, nobody can really dig him up because it's concrete, um, and so, I mean, nobody really has said, refuted, you know, this rumor, being like, oh, Jimmy Hoffa 
was not uh, buried under MetLife Stadium. But it does seem kind of weird because there, are, you know, there are more more uh, rumors that Jimmy Alpha is like underneath a barn, underneath different types of buildings. So nobody really knows where his remains are now buried. I would probably assume a se- like a regular cemetery, but uh, maybe he is actually under the MetLife Stadium to be exact. People say that he's buried in the West End uh, end zone. So, I mean. I don't know, maybe somebody has to do some ghost investigating at MetLife Stadium, but, uh, yeah, everybody's saying that Jimmy, Jimmy Hoffa's remains possibly in MetLife Stadium, but, again, lots of other rumors that he's under different buildings, so, can't really believe, you know, if he is under MetLife Stadium, but it is interesting, uh, to see if maybe he is, but I guess we'll never know, because he is buried under concrete now for this next and final one i will begin to some uh disturbing topics so this is a trigger warning for trafficking uh if you don't want to hear that you could just skip to the end i'm sure i'll leave a timestamp in the description for the end or you could just stop watching altogether uh so i mean thank you for watching if you are going to leave at this point in time uh i will give you some time to leave and i'll get right into the last uh, topic. Now, for the next topic, uh, we have Super Bowl uh, trafficking. I can't really say the next word, but Super Bowl trafficking. Um, And there is no definitive data that links directly towards the Super Bowl lending or in trafficking. Um, but it is a possibility. Um, many reports have said that there have been increase of people. Uh, I mean, I mean, there's been increase of people, obviously, because they're going to see the Super Bowl. Um, there's a lot of people there. Um, and this leaves a lot of people, uh, you know, a little bit vulnerable to possible, uh, you know, abductions or you know things of the sort because there are so many people around um and because there's so many people around you would think that a lot of people would see these people being abducted but you know you'd be surprised there are just a lot of people that get abducted in these uh at these big events and nobody really sees it because there's just so many people around um and so many distractions especially at an event like the super bowl um which you know, you know, does not help people that are vulnerable in this situation. Um, I mean, according to Forbes, um, 10,000, uh, let's just say workers, uh, were brought to Miami in 2010 when Miami obviously was being held in Miami that year. Um, and then 2011, uh, where the Super Bowl was being held in Dallas, uh, 133 arrests were made for underaged, uh, working, um, and on account of a former worker, uh, Clemming Greenlee, uh, who was 12 when she was abducted and forced to do, um, some pretty bad, you know, actions, uh, says that she was forced to meet with a lot of these bad people, um, at these large events, say, like the Super Bowl, so, it is a big possibility that the Super Bowl does help uh, unknowingly with this type of thing. Um, I mean, obviously, the NFL doesn't really have a hand in it, but there is a big possibility that the Super Bowl does lead and lend a hand, I guess, to these people that they can do some pretty bad things because it's a big event, a lot of people, um, and it's easier to grab these people and you know, big situations rather than if they were like a couple people, you can't really like get away with these types of things. So, um, I mean, you know, some people have investigated into trafficking during the Super Bowl, um, especially, uh, specifically, uh, in a village voice article from 2012. Um, and they basically, uh, uh, sorry, they basically, uh, interviewed two, uh, officials from both Tampa and Phoenix 
who said that they didn't see an influx in uh, these people, the workers, or, you know, these people um, being abducted uh, when their cities hosted a Super Bowl. Um, and, I mean, it's gone back and forth, really. I mean, I'm sure it's probably happening, but uh, I wouldn't say that it's a direct reflection of if the Super Bowl is being held there, but I do see how um, it could definitely help because there are so many people um, and, you know, then these abductions are being taken place. It's a little harder to uh, see and catch everybody at once. So, I mean, if they're, especially if it's in smaller, if it's a smaller place, then obviously not going to get away with this. But if there are bigger events being held and, uh, so many distractions, like I said earlier, like nobody's really going to be able to see these people being taken. So, um, I could see how the Super Bowl could lend to it, but I don't see how it could, I don't think it directly leads to it, but there is some, uh, some type of, uh, involvement, I guess you could say, and, uh, how it helps. Um, but if you do want to help these organizations that fight against trafficking, I would suggest helping out the International Justice Mission or Destiny Rescue. I will put, uh, links to both organizations in the description below. And that'll be all for the tier three of the iceberg. Next week, I'll be doing tier four, split that one up into two parts. Um, basically, for the rest of it, I'll be splitting up to two parts for each tier. Uh, so just, just so I can get more in depth um, and make kind of like shorter videos of each tier. So it's not uh, too long, like it's not like 40 minutes like the first two tiers were. So um, I just like to make it a little bit shorter. So I can get more in depth into each topic and I can't wait to get to tier 6 because they got some pretty uh, interesting stuff. The further down you go, the weirder everything is um, and it can be interesting, uh, but that'll be all for today's episode. Thank you for watching all the way through if you're on YouTube and thank you for listening all the way through if you're on a podcast streaming platform. Have a great rest of your day and thank you.